Bonner World is very excited for this special presentation. A lot of work has gone into this episode. For those who don't know, R.C. Lawson is the founder of Churches of Our Lord Jesus Christ, or Cool JC. We are proud to have the clearest recording of him right here on Bonner World. This is from the 50s so it won't be perfect, but we are certain it will be the best you've heard him. We work tirelessly to give you the best here on this channel. Lastly, we do encourage you to share our content, as long as you keep the Bonner World logo visible or verbally give us credit. Thank you. Before the air cool walk, the solitude, the zigzag lightning, play the games in the universe. I know before there was a win or where, or a thin or there. I know, I know before the foundation of the earth was laid. Go and when religion was at the low ebb, the pastor said, was riding wide, high, and handsome, as we love to say, or usually coat. A man passed through a city called Gibeah. Was taken in uh, from the streets, a stranger with his wife and seven, the house of a man from his own country, or country. The people so wicked that men called sons of Belial. Uh, Sodomite, homosexual pervert, crowded around the doors of the house and demanded the man to be delivered to them. For more purposes, they were degenerate. The man of the house pleaded with them, and they were not satisfied until his wife was shoved out, and then the crew in those days to women, and they abused her until she died. In the morning, her body was found on the step of the house, and the husband took a big butcher knife and cut her body in twelve parts and sent it to the twelve tribes of Israel with this test message. Consider this. Take advice and speak your mind. My subject tonight is, the thing is in town and it's got to go. It looks like a man, but it doesn't act like one. Switches, uses perfume, muscles of hair, an expensive robe. So if it isn't a man, though it looks like one, isn't a woman, though it acts like one, I call it the thing. Scriptures are being fulfilled in these last days. These are perilous times. Something is going to happen. This, this thing is too permanent. I have a thought in the scripture to consider of it. I want you to study with me and consider of it too. And then take advice or counsel and do like I'm doing tonight. Speak your mind. Not the long ago that came into our town, widely held, so-called religious, Personage. He looks like a man, but acts like a woman, who uses perfume to fuse it, and uh, reported to have served expensive licorice to newspaper men. Boss sells his hair, like a woman, but neither is a woman or a man. To me, it is as a thing. But the scriptures call them sodomites. Hence my text, the things in town, but has to go. I want you to read with me in the book of Judges that entire 19th chapter. Then turn and read also in the 7th verse of the book of Jude, the last book in the New Testament to the book of Revelation, which reads on this wise, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities round about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, stopping the vengeance of eternal fire. So likewise, these two seamen, the pile of flesh to keep with dignity, and so forth. In Romans 1, 18, we're told that the origin and source of homosexuality and the uh, cause of sodomites or perverts or sisters come about. By reading the 18th verse of the first chapter, that says, For the wrath of God will be from heaven against all ungodliness and righteousness of men, who hold the truth of God and unrighteousness, cause that which may be known of God is manifested in them. For God... I showed it under them. 
Now, the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even as the eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Now, that which may be known of God, uh, are manifested to them. We're told in the word of God, uh, that his eternal power and Godhead is manifested to them, so that they are without excuse, because that, when they knew God, they failed to glorify him as God, uh, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imagination. Their foolish hearts were darkened. Protecting themselves to be wise, they became fools, and saved the glory of the uncorruptible God, uh, into an image made like unto corruptible man, and to birds, and uh, to four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God give them up uh, to uncleanness, to the lust of their own hearts, to the sound of their own bodies, between themselves, who change the truth of God into lies, wish and serve the creature more than the Creator. And who is blessed forevermore. And therefore, this cause, God give them up to vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Against nature. Not that. Likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the women, burn in their lust, one towards another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was neat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God give them over to the reprobate mind to work, do those things which are not convenient. Now the book of Leviticus speaks of these perverts, these people who have cursed of God with a vile affection. Uh, uh, the Bible speaks of them in Leviticus 18 and 22. Please, you people in Radio Land, write these scriptures down and read them for yourself. For I'm sure that some of you are going to condemn me, and I'm expecting to get letters from you, and I welcome them, uh, and I shall answer you. In fact, I'm on the side of a spiritual crusade against everything that's crooked and wrong. Because the Lord has said when the Holy Ghost comes, you will reprove the world of sin. And the righteousness of judgment of sin because they believe not upon me of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. And it's right because I go to my Father and you see me no more. And we notice in Leviticus 18, 22 that the Lord says, Thou shalt not lie with man as with woman, or mankind as with mankind, with womankind rather. It is an abomination. That which is an abomination is abhorrent. It's an eternity. It's an insult. It is something detestable beyond words of expression to God. In Leviticus 20 and 13, write that down. Leviticus 20 and 13. If a man also lie with man as with as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination, and they shall be surely put to death, that blood shall be upon them. In 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 12, we're told in the word of God, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Uh, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers. The Bible speaks of adulterers, and adulterer as whosoever puts away his wife and mouth, another committed adultery. Whosoever mouth held is put away from her husband committed adultery. I'm told there's one so-called prophet and preacher, uh, by good authority of his own brother-in-law, of the brother uh, sister-in-law's brother to her husband, came between a man and his wife, and uh, she left her husband and children, he left his wife and children, and they divorced their, their companion respectively, and they married and came to New York, and he's now around here preaching and selling panels and holy claws and uh, running tent meetings and other type of meetings. But the Bible speaks of him as an adulterer. Whosoever puts away his wife and mouth, another committed adultery. And that takes them from the highest dignity of religiousness down to the dog catcher. God said, whosoever puts away his wife and mouth, another commits adultery. Then he says, be not deceived, so ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with men or mankind. That's sissyism. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall have heard the kingdom of God, and suffer some of that ye will, are wise, that ye are sanctified, that ye are justified by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Now, may I say to you in the name of the Lord, no things are lawful to me, but all things are not expedient. So I will not speak out it's too raw, uh, to pray, but you, I hope, will get the implication and understand, read between the words, and know for yourself that him that has here, here, let him hear. This sin of homosexualism, just as uh, that, uh, that uh, 
the word of God is against homosexualism. And it says that, Know ye not that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor feminists, nor abusers of themselves with men, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, shall, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such for some of you, but you're watched, you're sanctified, but you're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. Uh, when I give the text, the thing is in town and has to go, that it looks like a man and does, doesn't act like one, but uh, acts like a woman that is a woman, uh, he must be a sinner. Uh, scripture being fulfilled in the last days, spurious times are upon us. Something is going to happen, and this thing is too prominent, too uh, widespread, and it's multiplying. People are going into it, it's a, just like they're going into dope music. Some people take it as a thrill, a fad. But the new experience and fall victim to this prayer. For well, the book of Romans says, God give them over to five affection. Affection is worse than a dog. God has never given a dog that affection. God has never given a snake that affection. God has never given an animal that affection. A false that affection. But because when men come to the knowledge of the word of God and don't live according to God's word, don't accept the Holy Ghost, don't accept the truth of God, we'll do what God says. Uh, and the Spirit grieves. Uh, Father, we, and work with them, and when they turn them away and don't accept God, God turn them over to a reprobate mind, give them a vile affection. Go oh, lay down tonight a normal man and wake up at the birth. Lay down tonight a normal woman and wake up lusting after women. With a spirit, an affection vile and ugly, low down and degraded, such as no dog has got, no hog has got, no horse has got, no snake has got, uh, no, how you the word, vomit, I don't know whether they did it or something. Uh, but uh, no, no bomb, no land deer, uh, no kind of animal, I don't care how ugly, no hippopotamus, no elephant, no, no, no animal, you're lower than a dog, a snake, a hog, a man, a bomber, uh, what is that ugly animal I saw in Austria? Uh, 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 not a hippopotamus, it's another one, a walrus. Hey, that's a home out there, I declare. But uh, he is better off than you, you're lower than a walrus. Uh, yeah. lower than a walrus. God give him all the vile affection. My God, in these days, and you'd be surprised, some of you don't realize how widespread it is up in the upper bracket. You don't know. But the government had to turn them out. By, but the government had to turn them out by the school down there in Washington, up in our fair bracket. These men are switching around to the town just like women. And you women think you all are jealous of one another and not a woman is your rival. You know the one that hates you more than anybody else is a sister. A sister is your greatest rival. has got nothing for you to do. I don't care. How are you act inside of pleasure and he doesn't like you? Amen. Amen. He, he thinks you're in his place. Uh, he goes out for each other, mark out his hair like you do, and uh, wear things. In fact, he sort of acts more womanish than some of you women. And some of you women act sort of, you know, some, well, some women, I should say, act, act too coarse. They don't keep their feminine energy. They're too rough. Uh, Amen. Uh, but the sisters, uh, they're, they're dainty, you know. <laughs> I don't like, I like to see a man a little dirty. I don't like to see him too pleasing. Uh, <laughs> I like to see him a little dirty, a little rough. Uh, when a man comes to me all so neat, and I wouldn't wear suede shoes for nothing. Hey, man. <laughs> you got the story. This is my birthday Sunday. Don't you give me no suede shoes. Hey, man, I wouldn't wear, because most sisters wear suede shoes. Most of them. Dainty. Hey, man. And, oh, my goodness. And they put powder on. <laughs> Big eyebrows and hair my tail. And, Man, man, they carry on, and now you all don't, women don't switch no more, but they switch. <laughs> but they, they have that dainty walk. We walk too wide, you know, to take too long to step, to sit as deep. He walks like this. He carries on, takes it on, and he switches himself, throws his neck around. <laughs> Amen. He carries on. He was surprised. He, he puts on air. There's a lot of stuff. That's the mighty old sin. And I want the people to know it. It's a curse. It's a curse. You say, well, Bishop, can't these people be saved? Yes, I will save anybody. All manner of sins will be forgiven. But what I don't like about the average Christian, the average uh, he, she, or she, he, when they get saved, they want to justify or they feel that you should make provisions or exempt them from living the life. God can keep a sister free from... Uh, uh, his species, 
Uh, as well as they can keep me a regular 100% he-man from women. And if God can keep me, he can keep a sister from a man. He don't have to keep me from a man, because uh, any time he comes around me, I'm going to hit him and holler hallelujah. <laughs>
Yeah. And the proof they're putting it on. I don't care how much he uses. God told other world he's a stiffy. I don't care how many Bible verses he took. He is a perverse. And we should not support them. Now what the Bible says concerning them, get these scriptures down. First Kings 14, 24, Brother Johnson and you read it. First Kings 15 and 12. You use that one is in the same book as the 14, 15 verses. 14 and 24 and 15, 12. Another, you get second change, 23 and 7. Another, another, another Jones, you get uh, first change, 22 and 46. Uh, the sin the, the of sissism brought the judgment of God upon Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around about them. So God's judgment will come upon the world. God says this thing is compared to his word and he doesn't want it. All right, in the 14th chapter, 24 verse. And there was also Sodomites in the land, and they did according to all the abominations of the nation, which the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. Now the Lord cast out those folks because of these abominations, because of the judgment. And the people wouldn't accept God. The heathen world, the Lord uh, sent these vile effects upon them and cast them out. Those were coming right in the back of it. Instead of saying, well, that's what these predecessors of ours are cast out, but we won't do it. But here they're getting right back in the same state uh, that these people uh, were in when the Lord cast the people out. And you'll marvel at that God cast Israel out too. And if God burns Sodom and Gomorrah, up, stop first for the 15th chapter, so will God burn our whole world up. First Kings 12, 15th chapter, 12 verse. And he took away the Sodomites. And he took away the Sodomites. Out of the land. Out of the land. And removed all the idols. And removed all the idols. That his father had made. That his father had made. Here's a man going in for God. Now, the Bible won't stop until we fight sin instead of fighting one another. Like I said, the are doing talking about a hair and a few clothes. Yeah, and the shoes, the, the, the clothes out here. Now, there's something to fight. There's something that's real evil. There's something that is causing the judgment of God to come upon our generation. In the last 50 years, it had two wars. In the last 25 years, it had two wars. Uh, world War I and the World War II. And then we're in the face of another world war. And this is the judgment of God. Now, uh, uh, 17, 32, 46. All right, brother, brother uh, who has the second James 22, 7, 23, 7. And the remnant of the Sodomites which remained in the days of his father Asa, he took out of the land. Took out the land, didn't compromise with it. Didn't let them stay there. Took them out of the land. One preacher said he, the uh, fame, he said his church was full of men and women. Well, I'll break up refuge tomorrow, now, tonight. If I figure that happened here, yeah, they got to go. I'm refuge as well as out of town. Any preacher who punch out to know that people are indulging in that sin and call themselves holy to anything, you ought to go to all. God, I can have my suspicion of people that just pick out a little thing like clothes and hair and let that's an abomination as a, 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 a woman of that type uh, going through the uh, church contacting women. A lot of these women preachers without man spirit. Nothing but one of them did. Yes, definitely. Definitely. That's why they oppose men and act like men. And they're known to be that. Definitely. That's just as a, 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 a city as a rival of a woman. So a woman, she, he is a rival of a man. All right, who has second king friends himself? And he break down the houses. Break down the houses of the sodomites. Of the sodomites. That's what I intend to break them down or run them out or burn them up. Yeah. Yeah. One or the other. Yeah. Break down the houses of the sodomites. That were by the house of the Lord. That were by the house. And that were by me in the house of the Lord. That got right in the church. In the temple. If it had houses around in the, that is in the area of the temple. Where the women wove hanging for the grove. Yeah, and the women. See, they there with them too. Uh, it is one of the sins of the world. Uh, All right, now we have our passage of scripture. We are, we are getting, yeah, he's coming again. Uh, and we see Sodomite multiplying the earth with evidence of his soon coming. The first time he came down to see it. And then he calls the gift of honor, burn him up. That's what God's action is called. Burn him up. Opened up the furnace of the heaven. Shut down the fire of the death. And brimstone and fire, burning pitch, hell down. The man burned him up and left nothing but a 
A gaping hole there. That water where a hole was filled with water is called the Dead Sea. I've been through it more than once. And if a, if a city is overcome, taken over by these sins, and God destroys cities, how much more will he destroy the world? The tide of these things is coming upon the world. The judgment of the law, just as it caused him to come down first. Well, Dixon, I hope you will, I'd like to see you after the service. Talk to that one point. It will bring him to come down the second time. Yeah. Oh, I shall put him in my wounds. Give an air and air to the worst to let him that still death. And he's still to still. Hold that. And behold, it's a bit. Oh, I couldn't. Come in, Jeff. Came down the pool, burn up some cities. He's coming down a second time, going to burn up the world. Amen. And then say the new heaven and new earth. That there'll be no Sodom. I get so indignant. Think that they're passing off as preachers. Half man, half woman. Preacher. A thing. Good God of man. And brother, have you been guilty of it? Some of you didn't know. You didn't know the scriptures said that. Uh, but now that you know, clean up. Now that you know, move on up. Move on up a little higher. And that is God may not have given anything to you before. But now that you heard this, you're going to be sure. I want this scripture read again. 18th chapter, leave me a little bit for the second verse. First chapter, a little bit on the 13th verse. Hurry up, brother. Whoever's got it, come out. I'll read it myself. All right, I got it myself. 18th chapter, 22nd verse. Listen. Thou shalt not lie with man as with woman, or with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination unto the law. When it's chapter 13 verse. Now you know abomination is something awful that's the book. All right, the twenty chapter and the 13th verse. Notice what it says here. If a man also lies with a man or mankind, as he lies with a woman, or a woman lies with a woman as with a man, both of them have committed an abomination, they shall be surely put to death. And that blood shall be upon them. That is not only dead, but dead. And so your blood be upon you is damned. There's no work that you could do. Uh, whether it's a preacher, prime minister, whether in the missionary board, I wish I knew you. I'd give you a letter, and I wouldn't even give it. I'd turn you out flat I wouldn't send you nobody else. Uh, that says you don't repent of your sin. And uh, turn away from it. I'm preaching for the criminal law. I'm preaching as a God, I shall have to meet something. Charge the chief I have of God to go with. Never die and throw the save and pity for the sky. Amen. Must I to that judgment box? Answer him that day. Every word I say, I'm telling you, uh, you would have to find ten preachers in town. Preachers coming like I'm preaching. <laughs> you wouldn't find it. Not, not a minute of these sectors that they wouldn't dare preach it. All their wind jamming and squeezing and moaning and groaning, they wouldn't preach nothing like this. And I, I know I'm taking my hand, light in my hand, for some of them may be right here today. They hear about it. They're bull rascals. And they're treacherous. Amen. But I'm telling you, the things in town, and it's got to go. I'm going to cry out against that false prophet. Amen. That's a sister and known to be a sister from childhood. Down in Alabama. His members right here that knew him ever since his employer. He's all now come back as a prophet. Amen. It's a shame before the living God. And I bet not catch one of you in there. Amen. The cross is a shame to be found in a place like that. The Bible says not only them that do such things, but them that have pleasure in them that do it. I have no pleasure in them. Praise the Lord, and you ought to have any pleasure. Don't let you out to kill you. Amen. Stay away from that. Amen. Praise the Lord, because uh, you'll presently encourage others to do. And they don't know what you're there for. Amen. And they'll go there and get what they got there. And thus down their own soul. Yeah. Amen. The things in town. they have got to go. Yeah. Some of you may be mad. No apologies. Amen. I'm simply saying, God said when he called a preacher, let him be the husband of one wife. Yeah. Amen. He didn't call no women to preach, so that said it. He told them to go to the men and work with the men. Yeah. Go tell my disciples I go before them. Paul said, help those women that live with me in the dark. Praise the Lord, but he did not give them the commission to preach. Give it to the men and they are helping. Amen. They are missionaries and teachers. Praise the Lord, to work in conjunction with me. 
But they both must know that they're not only qualified. There's a man for the scripture says, I'll let have you to know, never got the first one. The head of every woman is a man. And the head of man is Christ. The head of Christ is God. And we're going to go to heaven, we've got to get in heaven's way. We've got a man nurse up to the word of God. Hey man, I see that trained nurse there looking right at me. Hey man, when she went and trained nurse, she didn't go there with her ideas about uh, mutton suet and rubbing the chest. She had to go to work and do what those people there, professor, had to say. Isn't that right, man? They thought right. she had to do it. And she still got to do it in order to get in that hospital where she's in, over at medical center, wherever she is. And we have one here from uh, works in Spidenham. And she doesn't go there and try to have a homemade remedy. If she got it, she keeps it to herself. She administers that medicine like the doctor tells her to do. And do the thing that she knows the medical profession requires. And so if you want to go to heaven, you better measure up to what God says. That's all. They go, women, get in that place. And men, get in that place. Men be men, real men, so women can call you Lord like Sarah called Abraham. I don't blame some of these women for not calling some men Lord because they don't act it. And I haven't got enough backbone and manhood about them. Too sissified, too weak, too mealy mouth going around calling his wife and mother. Well, I'm going to call mine Carol, Jane, or two, whatever she is. There's a lot of, amen. And you ought to care, don't you call mother, uh, mother to a woman. Uh, she, she's your wife, she's your wife. Not your mother, unless you're one of them half raised men that mother got to call you, or uh, wife got to call you uh, son, but if she's standing around and call you son, you get offended. Amen. <laughs> amen. One man called his wife, said her face looked like the thing, and she killed him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. If you, if you want to really, you want to really be a man, be a man. Some men are so great and important. Why don't they be your husband? Let's be your husband. she got to make the same time you make and sort of make some concession to her. <laughs> don't be so strong on this. Okay, uh, she's been out working all day, you too. Then you get back in there and help her wash them dishes, make up that day, and help her they might clean the house. God, it's a 50-50 proposition. <laughs> but uh, if she's sitting down home and you're bringing in the bacon and she's trying it, then she can call you Lord. <laughs> then you can quote that scripture over your husband. Praise the Lord. Uh, be a man. Be a real man. Uh, I, I thought one thing about a woman. If you're a man, there's nothing a woman admires like a real man. But it's nothing she gets so disgusted with is one of them yes men. Call her mother. <laughs> she just can't. She gets so she would. She can. She feel like beat this. Yeah, but it's just be a man. That is because it's so... He hasn't got enough of it. <laughs> uh, uh, she, she doesn't appreciate it. Uh, if you want to be a real one, a woman to admire you, be a man. Be a man, real man. Be courteous, be gentle, but take a man's face, cut the part, and you never have any trouble with a real woman. Uh, if you get one of them tomboys, then you have never got it in the first place. Uh, <laughs> man, because she, she doesn't know what it's all about. She doesn't know how to treat a real man. Uh, but a real woman knows how to treat a real man. But she doesn't have any stomach for a man. That's not real. And now you find a lot of men so weak in the man, I think we're going to say, man, get out. I can do better than the man. I'll tell you. Praise the Lord. And they get up and do better than the men, too. I'll preach them. Well, they have more consecration, more knowledge. Because of the fact that uh, they're, they're, they are really called of the Lord in the mission work. And the man probably is not called of the Lord. You see the point? <laughs> if you're not called of the Lord, these women are not preacher. <laughs> Amen. But if you call the Lord, they don't mind sitting down listening to you. Because you're a real man. So may the Lord bless you this morning. The thing then counts, and it's got to go for I'm going to work on it. I'm going to work on it tonight. Every time I think of it, it's something I feel like biting the button, kicking under the belt and over the belt and everything. It's got no business here. As long as it takes its place, be what you are. You're sissy, be a sissy. And I can let you switch and throw yourself in the curb to this building sign. Building sign. You're a sissy, that's all you are. But when you try to come up here where I am and be a preacher and a man of God, we got to go. Amen. <laughs> we got to go. Praise the Lord. And may the Lord bless you. Sanctify these words in your heart. And wherever they are, and men, watch your women. Women, watch your men. Amen. And I'm not saying to create suspicion. And girls particularly watch. One girl married at one of those things, he wouldn't stay with her one night. Then single seven, eight, ten years. Praise the Lord. Amen. So it is. With women, and so many of them like to marry for front. I know a sister married a woman, I don't know how you get along, but, uh, but absolutely, she's one of them. But now, uh, but I put him out just to say, okay, I must be married, I already had to go. Because I couldn't stay in the ministry. Here! Because our sister's got no business in the ministry, I don't care how he can sing, and doesn't sing, you know. 
And they can play the piano, you know. Oh, my, and talk. One of them came here with a singing group, hair in a robe, and I declared there's three women and one man. Oh, one of them there. <laughs> and he outwoman the women. When he came through that door and walked up here, I could have took me a stick. <laughs> and sanctified it and hit him. <laughs> <laughs> I said to Ruby Kate, I said, don't you bring that thing back here again. If you ever expect the thing in refuge church, don't you bring it back. She hasn't brought it back yet. Now, I don't want no sissies singing, preaching. I don't mind him praying. That's all. to get it right. But no preachers, no sissies praying or singing or preaching. Because in the house of God, a holy house, men should be men and women should be men. <laughs> Get right with God and do it. Oh, get right with God. Jesus Christ, 
to go in was come. I thought about everything. I thought about my life. I thought about my possessions. I thought about everything. I said, after all, whatever I got left, I have to leave it all. Then the thought came, I have gone. Hallelujah. You don't know what that meant to me? That I, when I'm stripped of everything, I have my God. I have the knowledge that I go out to the world of the spirit with a sense of his presence with me. And to me, the presence of God means everything. Everything, everything, I need everything. Being ever. The presence of God means everything. The Holy Spirit. Church membership is what I'm talking about now. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. That comes in a man, huh? And he's right, he feels the nose as a consciousness of it. Well, I'll have to leave my cars. I have to leave my sons. I have to leave my wife. I have to leave my Darling, the actor, I have to leave the property, I have to leave the church. Yeah, I'm my own soul now. Naked, came out of the world. Naked, I go out. But not naked, for I'm clothed in him. At that time, the presence of God meant so much to me until I haven't got over it yet. And I want to feel this presence every moment, every hour. Let me feel thy cleansing power. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's the only happiness I have in the presence of God. Only peace and comfort and security, sense of security, is the presence of God. Praise the Lord. The Spirit of God. I don't care what church you're a member of, what your faith and what your background. If you have it, you're doing, you do not feel the presence of God when you leave here. Or you may feel it here because he's collectively in the people of God and the atmosphere and the general extent is the atmosphere of worship, the presence of God. He's in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. That means in the midst of the church. Yes, he's him. This is the house of God, the very gates of heaven. But when you leave out from the crowd, let out by yourself. How do you feel now? 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 How do you feel Thank you. 